the birthplace of theater, epic, and lyric poetry. In various Greek city-states, great storytellers and singers gave birth to myths. These myths or stories tell us how the Greeks perceived and related to the world around them. The stories told through theater often fostered profound individual, cultural, and political change. Greek gods and heroes were far from perfect, and their deeds or misdeeds were lessons to be learned from and embodied. Persephone's return focuses on the power and meaning of mythology to understand our world, and more specifically, nature, while Odyssey's end focuses on the fatal flaws of Odysseus, who returns home a very changed man causing chaos and devastation that others have to deal with. Both plays enlighten the human condition as they teach us about the dynamics of relationships, love and power, power and fear. But before we begin, I'd like to tell you a little briefly about our home, Polaris North, for those of you who don't know. We are a nonprofit charity and a cooperative of actors, playwrights, and directors. And during this pandemic, we rely on your generous tax-deductible donations to help us survive. So please visit our website, www.polarisnorth.org to make a donation through PayPal. So without much further ado, let's begin with Persephone's return. Thank you and enjoy the show. There's been a catastrophe. A girl has been taken. None of us are free of what will follow. It's Persephone, daughter of Demeter and Zeus, so young and innocent. Demeter scorned the men who wanted her. She kept her child well protected. This morning, the girl lingered in fields, gathering flowers, as if pulled out of the earth. Hades, lord of death, rode a stallion up and snatched her. He carried her off, draped her across his saddle under his arm. Meter is in a rage, scorching the earth that hides both crime and daughter. Forests are ablaze, human crops burning. Hunger will be brutal. Dear Demeter, how awful! How can I help? Well, Zeus must get her back. His brother took our child, took her, like a simple, random slave. Aha! He cannot let her be torn from me. To the gloom of death's vast darkness? Ho, ho, ho! I'll get her back. You will. She will return. Where is the foremost of the gods? My so-called husband, ah. chief, mm -hmm. old bull. The goat, the swan, the master of misleading, is pacing an empty palace. Is he frantic for his daughter? More, he misses the savor of roasted offerings raised in prayer. Your fiery rage has turned people away from the gods. Without their regard, we're nothing. It's a time when they should pray. Well, my first prayer is for my child. It's a terrible thing to take a child. She's your own child, lightning hurler. And I gave her to Hades in marriage. Hmm. He reached for her with love. He loves her. I'm her mother, and you never asked me. Oh, you let him take her from me? Abduct her? And worse. No. He's loving in his gruff manner. He's whining and dining her. In hell? With the dead? It's her new realm. And much larger than all the living world of passing fancies. You were too protective. We never could have made this match with you hovering. Hades must have scared her to death. Did you talk to her first? It's politics. We had to act. 
And she's taken from me forever? No. As we once agreed to slumber and renew, slumber and renew, we can agree together now. Agree to what? Agree to my brother as the girl's good husband. He's as worthy as me. He just drew the world of death as his domain. A hard fate. And he needs the girl's comfort. I approved and he acted swiftly. Be gracious as your hopes and make this good. Our daughter, queen among the strongest gods. First, you must agree to the waste of all the sunlit world, its fields and forests burned, all your river nymphs parched and dry, mountain nymphs teetering, weak with hunger, about, about to fall. Oh, and what a hard fate for you to be barren of worship. I see the hurt I've caused you. I went too far. I can't deny you and all that we were together. I'll make this right with you. You will at once. So now I must take the girl back from a loving husband. Mm -hmm. Take her back from my brother. I promised her to him. He longs for her. You'll have me cross him. This may be fatal. Your rash actions may be fatal to the gods. You went behind my back too. Again. I'll try to make it right, but it all depends on this. She cannot have eaten in the long night of death. The fruit of twilight tastes eternal. It seems to satisfy attempts, but holds and never lets go. No one comes back. Who's coming now? Can it be? Other. <gasps> Persephone! You're ah! back with us. We love you. Are you all right? Were you frightened? That hardly matters now. I've completely changed. Persephone is now a queen. As my mother is enamored of the earth, I now enjoy the comfort smothered within my daily engagements with death that rules multitudes and so many more arriving. All of them wander in silence, musing on their distant past and parents, as if all that happened then is still now. All they see is that distance to what's gone. All of them? All of them feel the same? But just as I imagine them. So yes, all the dead are soon the same when there's no one left to love them still. And that comes for all, a second death. But who is left to know? You will know, because now I have told you. You may return among the living, you're free. But I have tasted power over death. And so I'm perverted past this life's mild spice of the fleeting and their fast departures, their nervous numbering of decline. I snack on seeds of pomegranate gathered in death's vast dominion. I bite to burst the bulbs of nectar. I, I grind the, the seeds to toughen teeth and bones. Seven seeds are just a beginning. So you're lost to me. For half the year, I will rule in hell. For half the year, we'll live together still. For half the year? Long enough for your grains to ripen. Oh, you can do better. What's happened to you? You must never know. What do you mean? Don't ask. What Don't else? ask. Ah. It's a mystery, my secret. Zeus? Let the girl have her dignity. What was done to you? I see and know that now I have the power over Zeus and all the old gods in the oldest, widest realm. Nothingness. So it will be. And with you all the world will cycle and change. The earth will lie cold in stark shadows and dim while you are gone. How did you return so fast? You were stolen and returned as fast as if the news of it spread. Oh, and you changed so much, so fast. There is no time in the afterlife, none. 
Every moment is the same, lingering on, ever slowly fading. So I can come and go as I please. You ate there, the pomegranate seeds. Then how can you ever leave? As queen, I can change the rules. So I did. Well, then why stay there at all? Come home. Hell is my new home. And there is so much work to do. There must be a better way than souls just fading to nothing, energies drained and exhausted, the, the waste of memory's wisdom forgotten. And their love so precious, evaporating, a mist that shrouds them as they nod off. The world is not right. As I am a queen among the gods, I will find a better way. I will make a better world. The heavens will bow to your dominion. What a task you set yourself. Oh, my young girl. Yes, with the young girl's fresh dreams. Will your husband join you in this, Hades? Oh, why isn't he with you now, his new bride, to see your mother? Hell is a damn big job, and the dead are not no of any help. He's busy, wasting away with them. As a god, he lingers on, but emptied. It's sad. You see? He needs you. He roused himself out of torpor to ride up to claim you. He's not been so energetic in eons. Well, how is your so-called marriage to that dour brute of a sluggard? There was no ceremony for your mother to see, to attend, and how could I want to celebrate? How was your wedding night? Is Hades the least little bit satisfactory? Mother, can you think of nothing else? <laughs> You're a fertility goddess indeed. <laughs> There's more to life and death. More to life? Oh, you should know pleasure. What are your secrets? Are you well? Enjoy the bloom of life. Don't probe the dark. I'll take care of that. It's my realm. In my hands. I will conquer death. Well, tell me how to help. Tend to the crops. Sustain the living all you can. <laughs> Don't flood me with more dead of famine. Don't harm people more. If you saw how empty death is for them. The fields will, will bloom with Persephone's return. Crops to sustain our worshippers will bloom. But, but, until I know what has happened to you, the forest will burn each fall, each year worse to remind people of Earth's anger at losing your innocence to politics. Can't you see she's fine and a great queen? Feel proud. You and I will never see eye to eye after this betrayal, this great crime. The Earth will feel the fires of my rage and then the chill of the crime each year. <laughs> but you... Ah, my darling girl, for you, the fields will emerge each spring in new life. And the flowers I loved and sweet berries that grow wild will all thrive each year as tribute to you. And you will walk among them with me. And we will sing of flowers and corn silks. We'll sing of you while berries are ripe. Eupithes, a citizen of Ithaca, enters with a sword. 
The king has returned. Great Odysseus is home after 20 years. And what has he achieved here already? He's massacred all the noble young men. My son Antinous among the dead. He's already burned their bodies. No funeral for my murdered boy, just scorched bones. Oh, Odysseus, what has he ever done to benefit our people? He's all lies and bloodshed, but a wily veteran of many battles. I must go out with my sword and face Odysseus and surely be cut down, but that is our destiny, men of Ithaca, to be slain in the spirited adventures of Odysseus. We must strike now before his crews join him. He must have ventured ahead. Let's go kill him now, or at least, at last, die as we deserve to flee emptied life in the land of a hero. There he is with his son and some farmhands. Let's hurry and strike at them. They'll be tired from their grim night's work. How rare for a man of Ithaca now to stand beside a living son. At them! Odysseus strides on stage, spear and shield in hand. Odysseus I've... kills you, Pythes. I have returned. Odysseus, your king, at last. I've so longed for this day. The gang of evil men who robbed my wife are dead. Order is restored. Ithaca, our home, is warm and bountiful and kissed by sea breezes. All is well. It's good to be home. Go to your homes. Your king commands it. Blackout. Penelope is sitting on the bed, which has a tree stump as one of the posts. Odysseus enters. Where have you been? There was an old man down the hill shouting that I'd killed his son. He was gathering a crowd to come kill me. I took care of it. Another man dead? We were all together. My father, my son, and me, armed and swift. What joy to be with my loved ones again. The crowd <laughs> scattered. Who was it? Whose father? I don't know. He was raving. You're crying. <clears throat> Come sit. You must be tired. You killed so many. Ah, Telemachus did his share. A good son. <laughs> I didn't kill anyone. Am I a good wife? You tell me. It's been 20 years, my love. And still you remembered our marriage bed. Though a bed made with a tree stump is hard to forget. I never forgot you. Not once. I thought of you always. We'll rest now. Sometime soon you'll tell me what you did for the last 10 years between that slaughter in Troy and this new one in our home of all the young lords. I will. I'll tell you about my 20 years, keeping our palace, throne, and rule intact through courtesy, charm, and guile. Thank you. Killing that old man down the hill will not stop your kingdom's coming outrage at the deaths of many sons. We're strong, but few. When will your ship and crews arrive? We need them. Don't realize who the dead were. She was from a leading family. Some were princes of our allied kingdom, claimed to be my guests. It is not over. I sat among them. I saw their insolence and greed, feasting on your weakness alone. I am not weak, nor are their families. They'll want revenge. Where are your ship and men? <sighs> All the ships but mine were destroyed in a cove with great rocks rolled from cliffs by savages. My ship escaped, but sank in a storm. All the men are dead. Maybe a few survived somewhere. No one returned before me. I have no one with me. No men, no ships. Just a raft I hid in an inlet below. No one must know. They died with glory on a journey of conquest and adventure. <laughs> I rescued you from a mob of spoiled layabouts, feasting away all you had. 
food and drink I let them have every day. I had a life. I had my friends, my maids. The slave women? What of them? I heard they were sluts for those churls and louts. Heard from whom? From me? Did you ask me? No. You had the maids drag and pile the bodies and burn them. Such a of flesh. And then you made them scrub all that blood and gore off our walls and floors. After their awful toil, you strung up and hanged the maids in our front hall like a ghastly welcome home banner. You judge me. This is my greeting, wife. Why did you not greet me as soon as you arrived? Give me joy at last. Why did you lurk about in shabby disguise? To see how things were. You didn't trust me? There were so many men. I was a threat to their plans for you and all our treasure. Some of the suitors plotted to kill our son, yes. I knew. My spies told me. The maids who mingled with them, drank and slept with them, learned their plan. My dear women, you hanged. They were clever spies who saved our son's life. You think they preferred you to their young men? You don't know, my friends. You should have put on trial just a few suitors I'd gladly name, the plotters, instead of slaughtering them all, making us many mortal enemies. No one will dare take my rights of kingship. We're easy, evil, easy takings when they learn that besides these new dead, all 600 men who followed you to war are dead. There's just us, your father, and our son. Some workmen, too. With rest, we'll think of something. Remember what you saw tonight. We're strong and cunning. Many will rally to their king return to hero. The gods will make them forgetful. Forgetful of fathers, husbands, brothers, sons? Long gone. Lost to time. You were long gone. I rejoice that you'd return to me. I'm present. The dead are in the past. When I was in your past, all these years, were you with other women? No, never. But you were in your prime, a king and storied hero strutting through a man's world, taking slaves. Be honest with me. I want to be clear with you. I was never with a woman, except slaves, of course, but never a free woman. But there were nymphs. Nymphs? Daughters of Titans. Spellcasters. Only two. Only two? In 20 years? One was a witch. How you must have hated her. How long did that last? Just a year. She tricked me and trapped me. I understand. Circe, her name. <laughs> the other one, Calypso? I had to live with her for seven years. I see. That's where you've been most of these long years. In her spell. And even so, bored and homesick, I laid on the beach every day by myself, longing for you. You and all my family. No women, but a few witches and nymphs. No wonder you were gone so long. Titans still have powers, spells. What spells their daughters must weave. Yes, bad magic. I long for you. I'm good at weaving too. I lied each day to the suitors at my loom, weaving, then unraveling my work at night, made my false promises to them, weaving. Weaving for years, you were away cavorting with nymphs. They wove enchantments on me. Listen, we'll tell the people this is how the gods willed it. Their sons adventured in service to the gods and were blessed, made immortal. Their deeds of Troy will burn brightly forever. These suitors were thieves, taking what was mine while I served the gods. The people will see who still stands strong. 
they'll soon accept, forget, and go on. Before you left home with an armada, now all of them dead except heroic you, we've known each other for what, two years? I was a teenage princess, a new queen, just given birth to your son when you left. I hardly knew you. No word of you since Troy. I've lived my own prime years, two decades, and for these last several years, surrounded by young noblemen, all importuning that you must be dead. How many nights? Was I as faithless as you? You'll never know, because you hanged my best witnesses, my friends, my maids. Was it your old nurse who told you jealous gossip about my dear companions? She sleeps day and night. The hag knows nothing but a clouded past. You believed her about my maids enough to hang them. You should wonder about me. That supposedly loose crowd were my court, my inner circle, my heart's only peace. Tell me too, if you must, your suspected licentious queen. Say I was with Amphenoma, the prince of Megara. Those were the salacious whispers. She was heir to a greater kingdom than this, and a sensible, handsome, good young man. You spoke with him. He was civil to your tramp disguise, always a charmer. Now he's dead, his wit silenced, his smile twisted into that hideous rictus. I saw it. Body burned to please your murderous rage. But would it be politic to slander and kill your wife? Your best and nearly only ally? Think. We'll soon face a storming sea of grieving and rage subjects with great waves of kings who lost sons tonight. No wonder I didn't recognize you. I never knew you. But I do. I do now. Penelope exits. Blackout. Odysseus is asleep in an entryway, as if he fell asleep while guarding. Penelope enters. Wake up! It's mm. afternoon! Someone's come! A king! A king has landed with a troop! Already? He's the king of Epirus, on the mainland, just north of our island. Not far at all. Our workmen tell me uh, people on the shore are flocking to him. And he has a troop? Great ship full. Three men at arms. Then I must die defending my kingdom. You should flee. I'm not going anywhere. Who, who is this king? Did we kill his son last night? It is Neoptolemus. Pyrrhus? Brightfire? Deadhead, the son of Achilles. He came straight from Troy to seize a kingdom. He took it, Pyrrhus. He's our mainland neighbor. He's far too young to have a son who was a suitor. Ten years ago, he had no son. Weren't you great companions, victors together? Won't he embrace and welcome you? We were allies, but far from friends. He resented that his father's armor was awarded to me, not to him, a youth at home who'd seen no action. And then he disobeyed me in an urgent matter. Look down the hill. A towering man approaches. It must be him. He's alone. What? Redhead. Uh, otherwise, he looks like his father, even more as he's aged. And he's wearing the armor of Achilles that I earned and wore a short while. What happened? When I brought young Neoptolemus to Troy to fight, I gave him the armor. Then that feud is in the past? I hope so. When the best and fiercest ally of Troy, Euripides, warlord of thousands of men, drove us back against our ships, Neoptolemus strode for the first time into the raging front of battle and killed him. In the armor, he was the ghost of Achilles. All the Trojan side saw, broke, and fled. And you can escape, dear. Go now. He's come alone. I know him. He's a friend. What? Ah, 
<laughs> Hail Neoptolemus, welcome friend to my humble home. Neoptolemus enters, wearing armor and a sword on a belt. Odysseus, home at last. <laughs> Odysseus and Neoptolemus embrace. We're as close as we were in the dark belly of your wooden horse, our limbs and faces darkened with ash to strike in the night. I hear you're our neighbor now. You found a kingdom for the taking, Epirus. Uh, you're the new neighbor. I've lived here for a decade with no word of you. Uh, that is a long and wild story. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine the story you would tell and wonder at its truth. <clears throat> Welcome, King Neoptolemus. Most gracious queen of Ithaca, Penelope. How is your charming new wife, Hermione? Uh, she's settling into married life well, thank you. And Andromache? And your child? They are both well. The boy is thriving. I'm sure he's growing tall. He is. <laughs> We're all adjusting, of course, to a bigger household with a new wife, alongside a concubine who bore my son. And both women were born princesses, of course. There's love to share. Give them all my regards. They'll love to hear from you. Thank you. I've heard stories of much killing since your return, Odysseus. Uncouth, lecherous thieves of my honor, home and heritage? <laughs> A mob of layabout villains feasting on my estate. They plan to kill my son and take my wife and throne. Sir, your soldiers are coming up the hill with the crowd behind them. I want my men close. They'll, they'll keep the crowd back. They won't set foot in your palace without my express command. And why would I do that? Uh, please understand, we are protecting you. I understand your view of last night. May I add many don't see it that way? They're grieving for many dead sons. They were the local young lords and some far traveled princes too. I stand by what I did out of just rage and for my family's honor. Well, I don't doubt that. As a friendly neighbor, I'm here to help my old comrade in arms and settle the peace here. With all the unrest, we'll need your men too, your surviving crews. There's no word of them yet. Where are they? As a great soldier, you have seen men die in service to their tribe, their people. So it was with my brave crewmen. They shared our triumphs, won eternal fame, but still they fell. All of them are dead. How can that be? They offended Zeus by killing and eating the sacred cattle of his son, the, the sun god, against my orders. They were starving. We had many ordeals. How did you escape? I didn't eat the cattle. When we first met, when you came to take me from my mother straight into war, you told me the tongue is a better weapon than spear or sword. You taught me to lie, to steal the bow of Heracles from long-suffering Philoctetes. In the end, I refused. And I refused to hear anything but the truth from you. Your men didn't die of beef indigestion. The gods' anger drove the sea in storms. Foul winds forced us into a cove surrounded by high cliffs. Savages on the cliffs dropped great rocks that shattered the boats. Only mine escaped. Then mine sank in a storm. Only I survived, I believe. The truth. Perhaps your men still survive near that cove. I don't know where it is. Storms, wild winds. The men, against my orders, had opened a bag of ill winds, hoping it contained wine I was hiding from them. The gods impelled and <laughs> destroyed us. Everyone who wore. All those hundreds of men I watched cast off with you for home, waving, cheering, leaving the shore of burnt and desolate Troy. At long last, all are dead. But here you are. This will not sit, sit well with their families. For many, it's proof enough you failed your men. And then last night's killing spree, Odysseus, you felt proper outrage, I'm sure, when you returned home to find young men making your palace their home, your queen and throne, their objects of desire. 
Was lethal attack the right response? Dozens, a new generation of nobles killed? Had they not been welcomed daily? Did your household led by your dear wife not permit them wine and food daily? Were they not entitled to hopes? After your 20 years absence, long presumed dead, a cooler head would have served you well, as it had so often in the war. You brought the war into your home against your neighbor's hell reenacted. Crowds and anger are growing. They've asked me to adjudicate the charges against you. Adjudicate charges? They charge you with murder, mass murder. Dozens of young men, guests in your home. They charge that you desecrated the bodies and denied them proper burial. All these things are true. With all your brave men at war, your sailors dead, you'll have no sympathy in this land. Here's my ruling. I can see that you cannot stay here in Ithaca, not as a king, not as a humble resident among the families of your lost men and newest victims. You must go away. Stay away for 10 more years. This may please you well, adventurer. The dream of coming home sustained me through long years and many ordeals. I fought my way home. You cannot sit on the throne of Ithaca, not safely. They won't be your people anymore. You cannot stay. Pretty your stories as you may. I told you straight. None of us are safe if we let you stay. Come with me to my ship. I'll get you safely out of here in a way. We'll tell the people you've been exiled for the dire failures of a great hero. And I'd live in a Epirus? A short sail away? No. Exile must send you far away. I'll escort you to the end of my kingdom and see you go further and see you no more for 10 years, old friend. It's for your protection and our peace. And the throne? It must go to my son, Telemachus. He took part in the killings? As a loyal son, serving with his king. Any fault was mine alone. We, we may be able to arrange that. May? It's my throne. Now to be my sons. We'll see what public feeling there is. King Eptolemus, please give us a little time to discuss this. I'll be outside with my men. I can choose to stay. It's my right. I'll prevail again baby killer who threw from the walls of Troy the infant child of Andromache who slayed a preteen son of Priam too and, and a, a daughter dares to judge me we must hold on to the throne for our son the Atreides will help me Agamemnon and Menelaus I serve them well Agamemnon is dead as soon as he returned from Troy, relaxing in his bath, his wife and her lover killed him. After all that? That was ten years ago. There's so much I don't know. But Menelaus is alive. He'll help. After all, I've sacrificed for him. Hermione, the new wife of Neoptolemus, is the daughter of Menelaus. I went to the wedding. So did several suitors. Menelaus spoke of how he missed you, honored all you did, excelling on his behalf. I'm sure he'd welcome you with love, but he won't differ with his new son-in-law. He seemed content with their perfect union. Penelope, my dear, what can we save? All these years, always, my thoughts were for you and coming home to you. I made a bad start, clearly. We have a marriage to preserve. In constant danger. Isn't that the way of kings and queens? We were married for about a year, 20 years ago. We've changed. Pyrrhus would have me leave you again. That's the story of our life. 
If I go, you'll come with me? I'll make it all up to you all my days. Some McKeon royal court will take us in. This is my home. The young man I knew will always be disguised as a stranger to serve some savage scheme. I'll stay to mourn the women who died. I gave everything to serve the tribe of fierce Achaeans, the brothers. I've nothing left. The war broke us. Your homecoming was a war. But I'm reconciled to who you are. I'm one far gone from the man I married. You didn't reveal yourself and embrace me. You disguised yourself. You didn't ask me for my knowledge and advice before you acted rashly and fatally. I'm sorry, but it's so. I found here a mob of cocksure bravados occupying my home, harassing my wife. I had to strike boldly. But <laughs> I can see now I don't belong here. I feel... The dead crowd round to claim me. I, I see how close we are to death at my hands or another's. It's, it's too easy. Let me flee ahead of my night. I'm already gone, drowning in horrors. Penelope, be free of me. I'm sorry. Save Telemachus. He'll be fine. He's great. Father's fine. Let me... Rest without burdens of command, without memories of all drowned at sea, or smeared with death at my red hands. That's all I am now, Penelope. Uneasy. Another burnt and bloodied ruin. Pyrrhus, please come in. I want to tell you, in my travels, I had to, to journey past death into Hades alive. And in hell, I sought out Achilles, my dear comrade. And I told him how you put on his armor and killed Euripides and broke the Trojan line where they pinned us against our ships. He was overjoyed. He ran and leapt, <laughs> shouting his pride and elation. That's quite a story, but I'm glad to please him. Thank you. It was not because you were warlike. He hated the war long before it killed him. He's now happy in death, only because you are well and grew into a fine man. We've all suffered from the war, still do, from what we saw, lived through, did. Driven by storms. I never adjusted to coming home to peace. It doesn't feel like peace, but a trap. I keep stepping into snares. Yes, I'll go into exile. It's, <laughs> it's fitting. In hell, I've seen the fading dead. Their treble voices guide me. I met the seer Tiresias there too. He told me my fate. It is as you said. I didn't believe it until now, but he knew. I must leave my family again. I must leave the cursed and killing sea, too. I'll walk off alone and carry on my shoulders an oar from a small boat over mountains into plains far from the sea until a stranger refers to the dead weight, useless burden I've carried so long and far, the oar, as a winnowing fan for harvest grain. How likely is that? But when I do hear that said, I'm freed. I can turn and walk the whole way back over mountains again and down to the seacoast. On the beach, I'll sacrifice in thanks to my old gods and finagle a ship, even a misfit untrustworthy crew on all on just my name and promises. I'll sail to far horizons and beyond the pillars of Heracles into endless sea until I may die at last. 
somewhere at sea in a fog on cold, dark waters. Was that the fate promised you? Most of it, not the death. My exile is only for 10 years. Then I can come back, right? That fits the rest of my prophecy. Before the end of my days, I'll be living happy in Ithaca. That's the part I've clung to. <laughs> Who knows what home I'll find here then? Will Telemachus be king? Until he sees his destiny, Penelope, please rule as queen in your own right, not as my wife. You've earned the throne. You held it in place all those years. I would be happy with such a wise and noble woman ruling Ithaca. You will have my protection. I'll see that the heirs of the suitors will pay full compensation for all they consumed and took in their daily feasting. That and the exile of Odysseus are my judgment in the suitor's death. Will you take the throne, dear? My friends, the maids are dead. I'm in shock at the horrors. The husband I awaited for 20 years is a stranger who is already leaving again. Yes, I will take the throne. I'll try to heal and help my people heal. I thank you, King Neoptolemus, for your protection of our humble island, our rocky hillsides of goat and goat herds. Someday I may retire to a hut like Laertes and enjoy the dawn of each new day. Until then, I will rule. And now we must be seen by the crowds escorting you off into exile, my dear Odysseus, with the love of your family. I'll take you to the ship now. My men will guard us and take us through the crowd. We'll be together, even just this once. All exit. The end. Uh, hello, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the performance. I'd like to ask the actors now to come and take a <laughs> virtual bow. And uh, including Bill, uh, we'd like you to take a bow as well. Um, and you can put your, uh, take yourself off mute, Bill. Um, all right, everyone. Thank you so much. Once again, thank you, Elizabeth Caruso as Penelope, uh, John Payne as Odysseus, J.B. Alexander as Neo, Thomas, Eupathes, and of course, is our favorite Zeus. And thank you, Meliora as Demeter and Ange as Persephone. Uh, now, if you'd like to ask Bill some questions, uh, please feel free to do so in the chat. If not, I'll start off, Bill, with a question for you until others come along on the chat. And for those who are on YouTube, you can, you can send me an email. Rosemary, one quick thing. I also um, want to I also want to thank yes for uh, filling in for Hera last minute as we were having some technical difficulties. Um, that was her first time reading for this role and I think she did a wonderful job. Yay. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Elizabeth. And I know Mary would be very pleased that you did a great job for her. Um, and um, unfortunately the Zoom gods were not kind to us this evening. But nevertheless, um, I want to ask you, Bill, what drew you to the characters of Persephone and the entire mythology around the harvest and the Olympian gods? And likewise, what drew you to the character, the very flawed character of Odysseus? What lessons can we learn from these various literary figures? Um, well, I've, I've always been drawn to the um, classic epic poetry, dramatic poetry, 
And um, these stories are very prominent in, it, in its history. I was drawn to them at a young age. Uh, there was a bookstore in my hometown where they ripped covers off paperbacks, uh, put them on discount sale for a quarter. And I bought and read lots of classics uh, for 25 cents a, a book uh, in my teens and have always uh, loved these stories. Um, uh, it's a retelling of uh, the Persephone story, a particular twist. It's usually said that uh, Hades abducted her. Well, he did abduct her in the moment. But th this version in which Zeus had agreed to it in advance is the version in Ovid's Metamorphoses. So uh, I went with that. And then uh, I'd always been dissatisfied with the end of the Odyssey. I thought that this, this, he just came and killed everybody. No one under his command is left. Um, and I was doing a little research in, uh, well, in Robert Graves, a uh, wonderful author, uh, The Greek Myths, and um, studied it and found the story of the judgment of Neoptolemus in it. Uh, he attributes it to um, Plutarch. Uh, so like Women's Mysteries, it's another story I've drawn from Plutarch. Um, and I liked it. There are other, other versions of what happened to Odysseus thereafter, but I liked this one. And um, enjoyed the character of Neoptolemus too. So that's how it came to be. And, and you know, you gave Penelope a very, very, um, an opportunity to become more of a feminist. Is that something that you opted for? Or do you believe that was already in the text? That she was someone who was a strong woman in her own right? I can't say for sure that it was literally in the text, but in the broad scope of the text, I would say so, because she did maintain authority, uh, though it was impinged on by a mob. Uh, she maintained authority and held things together for 20 years. And I think it's just inevitable at this time, too, that we would be reexamining the classic stories about women uh, in, in mythology. M many people are doing that welcome this chance to do that. And, and what's your take on um, Persephone and her, sort of the sisterhood among the female goddesses versus sort of Zeus, who even though he's in the minority, he still has the power over all these women. Is there something political that we can get from that today too? Or do you think that's something that we need to re-examine in society? Well, as, as far as the script for this, I'd, I'd say yes. Uh, I emphasize uh, what I, I don't see in uh, classic mythology emphasized the personal growth of Persephone into the role of being queen of the dead, queen of the underworld. And, you know, she's a, a, a figure I like a lot. I used her a lot in women's mysteries as well. Um, and uh, so, yes, I, I think I did change things up in, in uh, Persephone's return in that respect, too, in letting her come into her own more. Okay, great. Uh, I have some questions in the chat I'd like to ask you. What does the or signify in Odysseus's travels? I think it uh, represents uh, his commitment to the sea and his ordeals at the sea. And it is a kind of... Um, it is a burden, a burden that was put on him as a kind of penance, I would say, as, as part of his destiny. I see. Um, so tell us a little bit more. This is your second and third play related to the classics, Bill. Uh, have you, what, what is so compelling about the classics or have you always focused on the classics in your poetry as well? I, um, 
I'm interested in a lot of other things too, but I keep coming back to the classics and I feel very strongly drawn to them still. I, I, in part because I love the work that you and, and the wonderful actors and actresses at Polaris North have been bringing to bring the, the roles alive. And uh, that enables me to strive to do more and, and achieve more. And there are more stories I want to tell, but uh, these, I have a whole prior book called The Furies of uh, three uh, other verse plays um, set in classical period. So yes, it's, it's been a very strong influence. I've uh, tried to escape it. Uh, I, I've written some naturalistic plays too, like uh, Moral Support, um, Aunt Peg and the Comptometer. Uh, but I keep coming back to the classics and I have several ideas I'd like to achieve yet mm-hmm. in the realm of classics, including a, 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 a kind of um, uh, follow-up to this, to this play uh, following the Neoptolemus. What did you find particularly challenging in terms of writing both these plays for, you know, on behalf of mythological characters, on behalf of literary characters, what was the biggest challenge that you had? Well, I was very much in in the poetry of it for a long time. Um, Drew Sachs's workshop helped me recognize the um, that there's more to it than uh, orations about this or that. That about the uh, need for conflict. And the closer I looked at this story, I saw lots of conflict and it gave me uh, something to work with. Yeah, I, I, think, I think particularly the, the relationships between the men and women were rife with conflict. Um, okay, let's see. I have another question for you. Shouldn't there be an obvious incident or discovery that causes Odysseus to realize that he should go into exile? Shouldn't be shouldn't there be something obvious, I guess, clicking in his own mind? And thank you for that question. Maybe so. I, I hoped it was the buildup of details as he realizes he understands nothing about the world he's come back to and the power relationships and is only beginning to take in how catastrophic his own leadership was. He lost all his men. Um, it was their fault, of course, because um, they wouldn't obey him. Why was that? Um, so I thought it was a, a, a cumulative effect. And then realizing that he had no power once Neoptolemus showed up with 50 armed men, and Neoptolemus in armor, and uh, uh, he's two decades younger than uh, Odysseus and uh, very formidable. And uh, Odysseus realizes he doesn't have a chance here uh, with, with 50 soldiers backing up Neoptolemus and him with Odysseus, even without armor, he's just come back on a raft uh, from uh, a ship that sank long uh, years earlier. He he has no armor even, um, so he's not in a position to put up a fight. And I think I thought John did a wonderful job of showing him come to realize that over as one de- development after another unfolds. Right. Thank you. Um, I'd, I'd like to ask if the actors, if they're still um, able to be online, if they have any questions or, or comments for Bill. Otherwise, I, I think um, we will wrap this up because I don't see any other questions in the chat and I've not gotten anything further. But uh, is are there any other questions in the house, so to speak? Just thank you, Bill, for letting us be a part of this. And thank oh, you, Rosemary, for directing, for wonderful direction. 
I enjoyed the, the humor that you got into it. I think that was something new that you had done. And there were a couple of lines that I thought, that's really funny. Um, Persephone says, hell is a damn big job. <laughs> yeah, that's one of my, one of my favorite lines. <laughs> yes, I love it. <laughs> love it. I thought that added a, a lot to it because it, yeah. it leaves the tension, you know, and it's just, it's very funny. And, you know, I, I absolutely agree with everyone. I think these plays have a great, we're going to have a great opportunity once we get back to the studio to actually perform these plays. Because I think we'll all, we can all agree that Zoom simply doesn't do it justice. <laughs> But actually being in front of an audience and moving around on stage, I think that would be amazing. And I really look forward to doing that, Bill, with all three of the plays, including Women's Mysteries. Oh, great. Great. I, I learned so much from the actors. It helps so much. Well, well, your words were great. Yeah. They were great to work with. Yes, absolutely. And thank you all again. And thank you, audience. And thank you for the great comments we're getting. And um, until next time, we have another Zoom reading coming up in a few weeks. So stay tuned and visit our Facebook uh, for more details on that particular show coming up on December 17th. All righty. Thank you all again. And have Stay a great safe, night. Everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Ali. Thank you, Ali. Thank yes, you so thank much. Yes, thank you, Ali. Our, yes. our stage manager. Thank you. Thank you.